Hello there, and welcome back to another episode of the Ultimate Iron Man Progress series. On the last episode, we unlocked the Pieces of the Angler outfit. And to be honest, we got pretty lucky. We got it at a pretty low KC. This allows us to go to the fishing platform in the fishing guild and catch minnows, which we can then trade in for noted sharks, which is really handy on a UIM. So my only real goal this episode is to get my cooking level up to the point where I can cook sharks, which is 80. So then we'll have a way to catch and cook noted food, which heals 20, which is going to be just awesome for PVM. That's one of the things I love about UIM. Unlocking minnows was pretty cool on my hardcore Iron Man, but it wasn't the same kind of game changer as it is on this account. Speaking of Iron Men, I have my Iron Man Brachidios here to start fires for me to cook inside this poor guy's house. Which is not really a training method I ever would have done in an account that can bank, so it's kind of cool to explore the different methods. With all that said, let's get into it. Closing in on our first cooking level of the video. This is actually a pretty good XP per hour when I'm able to fully focus on it. Still, not really a method I enjoy, and I definitely wouldn't be doing this on an account that can bank. I don't know, it might be good for an iron that you're trying to get up to 70 for Recipe for Disaster, but that's about it. And there's level 72 cooking. Eight more levels to go. Oh, we can now do the Sacred Eel clue step without boosting. Nice. Okay, so without doing the thing where you hold down the space bar, I'm able to get about 120k an hour, which I think is pretty good. Level 73 cooking. Oh, we can make dragon fruit pie. I think that's the one that boosts your fletching by four levels. That might be handy someday. 74. 75 cooking. Oh, I think those are in the chambers of Zeric, which I guess maybe I could do a mega scale. It's been actually pretty tempting lately. 76 cooking. 77. 78 cooking. I'm glad I'm getting close because I'm really starting to not enjoy this method. I think I might need to find something more chill when I try for 99. Level 79. One more to go. Okay, and our last level. Yeah, I think I want to find something more AFK, even if it's slower. Um, when I go for 99. And there we go, level 80 cooking, which is as high as I really need it for a while. I think the only thing I need higher cooking for is the Arty Elite Diary, and we're so far away from being able to do that. Anyway, that cost us about 800k and 10 hours, so not a bad grind, but kind of tedious toward the end. Well, after all that skilling, it feels really good to get back into Slayer. I feel like it's been so long, but uh, we're still trying to get up to 85 for an Abyssal Whip. Another day, another Longbone. I'll definitely never say no to free construction XP, though. 89 range coming in in the Wyvern task. I wonder if that's going to be our first combat skill in the 90s. Seems kind of likely with how much I like to AFK Slayer. And speaking of AFK Slayer, there is... Oh, I guess we didn't get the pop-up because we were in combat, but there's level 79 attack. I kind of feel like it's been a long time since I've gotten a superior. Gotta love those guaranteed totem pieces, which uh, lets us get another crack at Skatizo, so I guess let's send it. All geared up for another Skatizo KC. I'm starting to feel kind of unlucky on the pet. I'm definitely over the drop rate between all three of my accounts. And everyone always says it's an easy pet. And there's Skotizo kill number 9. Let's see what we get. It's kind of crazy that our Arcloid is fully charged, so I've been dropping Ancient Shards. I guess I'm used to using it to do demonics and stuff. Well, at least we get a guaranteed hard clue. Let's see if we can do the first step. And we were able to finish that hard clue for Skatizo. We're gonna spin for luck. And Rune Plate Skirt G, nice. Always love the gold trimmed stuff. It looks so clean. Closing in on a pretty big attack level. 
I've been going for base 80 melee combats, uh, obviously except for strength, which is a lot higher. And after this, I'm going to go back to training strength so that I can get as much XP as I can before I get my whip, which doesn't have a strength option. And just like last time, no pop-up, but there's level 80 attack, which apparently gives us 105 combat. And let's go ahead and switch over to strength. Hopefully we can get like 90 strength or something before we get a whip. Okay, I know I'm wearing a ring of wealth, so it takes out a lot of the empty spaces on the rare drop table, but it feels kind of rare to get a dragonstone all the same. Kind of makes me think about finishing my jewelry box in my POH. I'll need 16 dragonstones in total for that. I think we're actually in a pretty good spot to go for that soon. Um, our looting bag is absolutely full of keys and dragonstones, so... Hard casket, but this is an area where I've been PK'd before, so let's see if we get to keep it. Whenever I get a casket in the wilderness, I'm always tempted to open it right away to see if I can at least get a collection log slot. I think I need to stop being so lazy and use a seed pod, though. I'd already be able to teleport out. Isn't this around where Venonatus was? I think some people in my hardcore clan used to save spot him up here. Okay, so let's see what we get. Okay, I don't usually pick up ashes or anything unless they're malicious ashes, but I realized I was close to a prayer level and I kind of want to knock it out before I go to bed. And there's level 73 prayer. I don't know what my next unlock is, I think 77 for rigor or augury. Well, I've been thinking about it, and that Dragonstone drop really did make me want to finish the Ornate Jewelry Box in my POH. And that will require 16 total Dragonstones. I need 8 Rings of Wealth and 8 Amulets of Glory. So I've got 13 Dragonstones plus my Ring of Wealth that I've always been wearing. So technically I just need 2, and that really shouldn't take too long. But I kind of want to work on my mining a little bit. I had been planning to go to 85 so that I could mine Runite rocks. I'm not going to do all of that this episode, but what I am going to do is turn in that Stardust for gems and try to get up to 80 crafting. I kind of forgot how much I enjoy shooting stars. And there's level 80 mining. We can now do tier 8 stars, which is going to be so nice. Earlier this week they just did a big mining revamp, which actually seems kind of nice, but I think I'm going to stick to stars all the way up through 99 on this account. That crafting XP is just too good to pass up. Level 81 mining. Okay, so I managed to get 9000 stardust, and once again I just need 2 dragonstone, so that's a really common drop. Um, I think it's like 1 in 40, so I've got a pretty good shot of getting the Dragonstone I need. Oh, and there we go, one Dragonstone. I just need one more. We're like halfway done with the Stardust, so I'm starting to get a little nervous. And our last gym bag? Oh man, okay. So, do I want to go back to mining, or do I want to try to get that Dragonstone another way? I think I'm going to go to Gorex. Um, yeah, I just need one Dragonstone. So, on the bright side, I allegedly have 100k, although no, that probably... Yeah, I'm not getting all those gold bars, so let's see. I have 74k crafting XP banked, which for a few hours of mining, not really bad. Okay, I really hate doing this, but I'm going to destroy this looting bag. I don't know, does that make everything appear to other players in the ground instantly? That seems kind of too risky with all that stuff, but here we are going to buy a looting bag from Crystalia and should be able to make it over just in time to get what we need. Oh man, this is way too stressful. Okay, cool, got it. So I usually like to make enhanced crystal keys to do the chest and priftiness, but I think for this many I'm not going to worry about it, because I want to get this done as soon as possible. Alright, there's all my crystal keys turned into dragonstones, so let's just go get one more dragonstone. 
Wow, it's been a while since I've done Gorax. Let's see if I remember how to set this up. I just need one key half to make a full key, and it's a pretty common drop, so I shouldn't be here that long. I think that guy's the one I have to trap. Okay, so I have two loop halves, so one tooth half, and we're done. Well, there's another loop half. Isn't that just how it goes? Oh, thank you. There we go. Okay, we're done. That did not take too long. I'm getting a little nervous about surviving my trip to the Fountain of Rune, though. Okay, since I'm death banked at Hispori, I'm destroying my looting bag again. This feels incredibly sketchy. Just let me know in the comments if this is not a good thing to do. I don't know, I should probably bring my other account to test if the other items become visible to other players immediately. I'm so nervous right now. I don't want to lose my prayer potions. Oh, actually, let me get a stale bag out real quick. Oh, never mind. So, unfortunately, we need to get some orange spice to do a spicy stew boost, and I haven't gotten my cat out of the POH in ages, so hopefully 50 karambolangi is enough. Oh my god, are you kidding me? I went to AFK and my cat died. I am a bad person. Okay, I guess we're doing this with a kitten then. I am so glad I only need one boost. This is so painful. Okay, cool. I actually got a plus five. What are the odds? Okay, I think all I need to do is get some balls of wool. I should have plenty of time before that boost goes down. So let's go ahead and get them. Wow, I don't know why I thought Ned had balls of wool. It's rope. He makes it out of wool. Okay. I should have plenty of time. I got two more minutes before that goes down, but I'm still pretty nervous. Okay, cool. Plenty of time. So yeah, we'll have our fully uh, decked out POH jewelry box. That's kind of exciting. And I can stop getting dragon stones too. Okay, I'm about to try something big brained. I'd have no idea if this is going to work. I have the Wildy Elite Diary done on my Iron Man, and that means I can set the destination for the obelisk. Now I wonder if I can set the destination and then teleport another account on it. That would be kind of busted if that works. So let's see, I set it to level 50. And let's give it a try. I'm kind of skeptical, but we'll see. Oh my god, it worked. Okay, that could just be luck. I'll test it more later, but that is crazy. So all I'm going to do is get the Rings of Wealth charged. And hopefully I don't run into anybody. I've gotten PK'd out here once before. I should be able to get the log if I see a white dot, so should be pretty safe. I won't be in combat for the rest of my duration in the wilderness. Okay, got it. Nice, and we made it. Okay, this is super random, but it kind of bothers me ending off an episode so close to a crafting level. So I'm going to go ahead and knock that out real quick. Seventy nine crafting that only took a couple of inventories. I think next week I'm going to go for eighty. It is such a nice feeling to have all my rings of wealth charged, so we definitely have all the dragon stones we need on this account. I just need to head over to the stonemason in Keldrum and buy a couple gold leaves. And we were able to boost with a cup of tea and a crystal saw. And. We can finally build our ornate jewelry box. Uh, why won't it build? Oh, I need a hammer. I am very smart. Yeah, it wouldn't be a UIM Brocky video if I didn't start an action before not doing it. 
being confused, but there's our ornate jewelry box. Let's take a look at the teleports it has. Most of the useful ones we've already had, I don't think there's really anything from the Ring of Wealth. Uh, maybe Dondekin's Rock? I don't know why I would ever go there, but... Falador Park for music steps, although I think I would just use the Falador Tele in my Nexus. It's really just a case of having the jewelry box upgraded all the way means I don't have to get dragon stones, and it makes my brain happy. So, not a big game changer, but it does make me happy. And with that, that is where I'm going to call it an episode. I feel like I've been doing so much Slayer in this account that it feels weird to do anything else, but I think over the next weekend, or maybe the next week, I'm going to go back to Shooting Stars to get however many levels I feel like I can stomach. It's crazy to think that just kind of passively over the last few episodes we've unlocked the ability to catch and cook sharks. And that I no longer need to stack up dragon stones, although I might look at the list of clues and try to make all of the stash units with dragon stone jewelry in them. So I kind of enjoy shooting stars and I like how much crafting XP it gets you. So I know that they just released a mining method that gives you prayer XP, but I think I'd rather get the crafting XP from shooting stars because I kind of don't mind just killing Abbey demons and using their ashes for prayer. Anyway, my goals are still Abyssal Whip, Amulet of Fury, and Quest Cape. So we're just taking a little side detour to knock out some crafting because at the time of recording, it is getting close to Memorial Day weekend and I've got a lot of stuff planned and having something to AFK sounds pretty nice. All that said, I hope you enjoyed this episode, and I really appreciate you taking the time to watch. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.